Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into something that's been creating some noise in the world of generative AI, and that is the Microsoft Copilot mobile application. In previous videos, we reviewed other variants of the Microsoft Copilot product, such as Copilot Pro, which allows you to use Copilot in productivity apps like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. We also reviewed Copilot for Windows, which is a free AI assistant integrated into Windows 11. And this time, we are going to review the free Copilot mobile application, which Microsoft is really pushing for it to be your own AI personal assistant. So let's take a closer look at how this app works and whether or not it's worth the download. Let's get started. So the Microsoft Copilot mobile application was released around last December and January for both iOS and Android. It is completely free to download and you actually have the option to use it with or without it being signed in into a Microsoft account. For today's video, I'll be using the Android version of the application in a Samsung Tab S7. So let's open up the app and check what functionalities are available. So when we first open up the application, we are greeted with the home screen of the Copilot mobile app. Here at the top, we have different suggestions for prompts that we can use uh, to interact with the generative AI. We also see here that we have the option to use GPT-4. And this is actually one of the great functionalities with the mobile application is that you do get the option to use a GPT-4 uh, model for the responses of the application. And if I am not mistaken, the GPT-4 model is actually something you have to pay for. If you're going through ChatGPT, I think you have to pay the $20 a month uh, subscription to use that model. So here with the Copilot app, it's, we're actually getting it um, for free. So that's pretty cool. We then, we then also have the option to sign in into the application, which I will do uh, later on in the video as we do get uh, some more functionality when we are signed in. And then finally, we come to our kind of UI um, chat functionality of the application, which is actually how we interact with Copilot um, itself. So as you can see, I can hit the text box and start typing a prompt if I want to. I also have the option to um, add a picture attach a file or speak to the uh, application itself instead of typing my prompt. So over on the top left, we have the option to sign in into a personal Microsoft account or a work or school account. We also have the options to change the theme between light, dark or automatic based on your operating system. You have some region and language options, permission, privacy, feedback and about So a very simple settings menu. Over on the top right hand side on these three dots, we can click on new topic that just kind of refreshes the chat and closes any previous conversation that you may have had with the Copilot AI. You can also provide feedback from here to Microsoft. And then we also have the option to show or hide the tones. And if you see when I click show tones, I can choose a conversation style. So this is basically how I want the AI to respond to, respond to me. Do I want it to be more creative? Maybe if I'm doing um, some content creation, uh, writing an article, creating a, uh, an email or something like that, and I need the AI to be more creative, I can choose that option. More balanced if I want a more balanced answer or more precise if I'm trying to get um, true facts from the AI itself. Um, usually I don't mess with these um, tones very much, but I do like to enable GPT-4 um, for my responses. So now that we've seen the UI of the Copilot application, let's actually interact with it. And there are basically three ways you can interact with the AI. Well, four if you count the microphone, but microphone and text for me is the same thing. Um, but you can actually interact through either a text prompt, a picture prompt, or an attachment. So text is very straightforward. We've seen uh, lots of generative AIs um, interact through text. So you can obviously ask it things to like write an email to my boss, letting them know I will be out on Thursday or create an article on this or that topic. And the AI will reply um, with a response. The advantage here is again, that you have access to a GPT-4 uh, model, which is supposedly more advanced and better. Um, so again, you're having access to that for free. So I won't do a text prompt as we, we've seen that a couple of times. That's pretty straightforward. What I do want to show you is interacting with a picture so you can 
you can either take a picture um, and ask uh, the Copilot app something about the picture you just took, or you can actually upload a picture from your documents like I'm doing here. I'm gonna upload a picture of the Progress Presso logo, and I'm gonna ask Copilot if it's able to tell me where the logo is from. And again, my channel is very new, very small, so I don't expect Copilot to know where the uh, where the logo is from, but let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so it's coming back with the response as expected. It's not able to determine where the logo is from, but actually very cool. It, it does tell me what it was able to uh, determine from the logo itself. So you know it has a letter P in it. It also says it has a letter B, so it got that wrong. Um, but it says it's got wavy lines above letters, suggesting something hot or freshly made, which is actually what I was trying to go for um, with this logo. So pretty cool that it's able to pick that up and recognize that. So again, you can interact with the AI through pictures. And lastly, you can also interact through attachments. And this one's very cool. So I'm uploading here a PDF uh, that's got some generic information about dogs. And I'm going to ask it to summarize document below and copilot will actually go through the PDF analyze it and then give me a summary on it as you can see as it's doing right now and it's actually very very accurate because it's being based straight from the PDF that I uploaded uh, it's something very similar to the Google Notebook LM functionality that we reviewed in a video a couple of weeks ago uh, of going through PDFs and using it more like a study tool, but Copilot also offers that functionality. Very, very cool. So now that we've reviewed some of the functionalities that you have available without being signed in with a Microsoft account to the Copilot application, let's now sign in with a free Microsoft account and see what other functionality we get. As you can see here, I've signed in with my Progresspresso Outlook account. And if I go back to the menu, I now have access to different modules here in the menu. So as you can see, once you've signed in, you now have access to these kind of sub modules within the application. So you have now designer, personal shopper, vacation planner, cooking assistant, and fitness trainer. Now, apart from the designer, which we'll go into it here in a bit, um, which is used to create images using the DALI uh, model, the personal shopper, vacation planner, cooking assistant, and fitness trainer. I've been trying to read up on that, but I haven't found much as to what benefits. Like, let's say if I'm trying to plan a vacation, why would I use the vacation planner module instead of just using the regular Copilot module uh, and going straight into that and asking Copilot the, the question to plan a vacation for me itself? Like, what is the benefit of using the vacation uh, planner? What I think it's that it's been trained on those topics specifically. I mean, that's, that's my assumption. Otherwise, why would you have a separate uh, module for it? But if you guys know, I'm going to I'm gonna keep trying to find and research uh, on that. But if you guys know, please leave it in the comments down below as I haven't found uh, myself the benefits of using these sub modules versus the regular uh, co-pilot module here at the top. But designer, this one is very cool. Uh, this one is used to generate uh, images. So especially if you are in the creative uh, field and, you know, image creation is something that you do very often. This is something that actually can come in very, very handy. So just to give you an example, I'm going to ask it to create an image of a dog playing chess. And I'm going to let it do its thing. As you can see here below, it says powered by DALI 3. So that's the model that is using to create this image. And there you go. The, and the pictures are a lot better. I don't know if you guys have played with um, image generation AIs before, uh, but in the beginning, it used to be very, like the images were very bad, you know, people's or anim people or animals were missing certain parts of their bodies. Uh, and then the things around them weren't very clear. This is actually a pretty great image from the description that I gave the AI. Um, 
you can and the cool thing is since it is a mobile app you can quickly quickly share or save it or do your um, photos and use it in whatever other application um, or purpose that, that you need to you dismiss this back and also that you can see that you have different kind of filters or edits that you can automatically apply to the to the image. So I'm going to choose here on low poly and let's see how the image changes. The copilot is recreating the image. And there you go. Now it's the same image, but kind of with a different effect on it. Uh, and it's looking very, very neat. So there you have it. That is the Copilot mobile application. Again, it is free in both iOS and Android, and you can use actually a lot of the functionality with it without having a Microsoft account. But if you want to use the functionality, for example, to generate images, then you will need a Microsoft account, which you can also get for free. Um, so very cool. Um, I think Microsoft is going to keep developing this Copilot product, as we've seen uh, with their other kind of variants uh, of this product. Uh, I think it's just going to keep getting better and it's something that's very cool and useful, especially if you're in the creative field. If not, then I don't think the application is there yet as far as being an, an AI personal assistant that's going to help you do much, um, but we'll get there, I believe, in so at some point. So that is all I have for you guys today. Please leave any feedback, any comments you have on this topic uh, or video down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.